Uh, here's Brian Kelly yesterday. He was speaking with the press uh, and uh, talking to the media as uh, he was giving his updates on his quarterback, Jaden Daniels, and where he stood going into Saturday night. What number is this? Uh, this is one. Oh. It's on the call sheet, Stuart. Okay. <laughs> he is. Uh, he practiced again today, so he will uh, most likely pass um, the protocol, and, and uh, I would say that he is probable for Saturday. Just got my ex account suspended. Uh, more from uh, whoa, yeah. more from, damn it, in the, Stewie football too. in the Elon Musk era. <laughs> I know Stewie football. Bad, do boy, anything. bad boy on X. Uh, more from Kelly talking about the update on Jaden Daniels. This is uh, to Stewie about him through the protocol this week. Lloyd well, King County, yeah. Um, I think most of the things that he normally does within his preparation, he's been able to. Um, uh, I think prepare in the manner that uh, he feels comfortable and we feel comfortable or we wouldn't we wouldn't put him out there. Um, Garrett's too good of a quarterback uh, for us to compromise uh, the offense in any way. Well, that's pretty good recruiting sound bite there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Retention. Other quarterback coming in this week is Graham Mertz. He is a transfer out of Wisconsin to Florida. Uh, Kelly was talking about the challenge that Mertz presents the Tigers this weekend. Yeah, very comfortably. I think that's the thing. The offense fits him very well. Um, you know, I've said this a few times now. He is completing at about a 75% clip, which is, you know, obviously highly efficient. Um, you know, I think the offense just really fits him well. Um, you know, he just uh, looks comfortable back there um, within the structure of the offense, and he's been he's been really good this year. He came out of high school. I, I recruited him and thought he was an outstanding player coming out of high school. Um, thought highly of him, and um, you know, I don't know whether it was a system fit or whatever it was at Wisconsin. Um, you know, maybe didn't um, have the kind of uh, career that that he might have wanted, um, but he's certainly living up to the the um, expectations that um, I saw for him coming out of high school. More from Brian Kelly yesterday, talking about his defense and the emphasis to get off the field on third down, and uh, what the message has been this week for LSU defensively. Yeah, well, they've they've kept it very manageable on third down. I think that that's probably the key is, you know, getting them behind the chains. Um, They're really good at keeping it, you know, third and and manageable. So getting them into third and seven or more is is really what is going to be important for us. Um, First down is really important for us. So... You know, those, those key downs, you know, P and 10, first and 10, you know, starting the series off is going to be important for us to get them into third and long. I mean, LSU's been getting a lot of people in third and long, and it hasn't really made a difference. Yeah, I mean, they just need to get off the field. They can't. Uh, this is uh, Kelly being asked about Matt House uh, this week and um, what's going on with the defense on that side of the ball. Five. Five. Stewie. What happened? Well, certainly, you know, we, we've had some some injuries, some key injuries. Um, you know, Makai Wingo was a, you know, a very versatile player for us that could play both a five technique and, you know, a shade, you know, and that gives you the versatility to play both four down and three down. He was an extremely versatile player for us. Um, you know, the other things that, that obviously affect that, um, certainly the safety depth, um, where you know you have to be very careful in the cornerback position. So, you know there there have been some limitations um, that um, you try then to look to put your eleven best players on the field. And so is it is it three down linemen? Is it four down linemen? You know you look at you know what what's the best thing for us relative to the defensive structure that matches the best 11 players. And so sometimes you lose the flexibility um, when you have to look at it in that regard. And, and that's kind of what we had to do and settle on a defensive structure that allowed our guys to play fundamentally um, fast and sound um, and, and, and maybe give up a little bit of that flexibility. 
Uh, this is eight, Stewie. This is Kelly talking about the freshman cornerback, speaking of flexibility and what the personnel is going to look like this weekend. Here was Kelly talking about what the defensive back end could look like with some fresh faces. They're excited about their opportunity. They're, they're locked in. They are absorbing all of the information. But, you know, we have to be careful not to, you know, put them in, in positions where um, it would have required a lot of experience to know these things, right? Like, hey, you should have known that. Well, you know, I've, I've played two games, you know, in the SEC. So um, they've done a really good job of um, stepping in um, as, as true freshmen and competing uh, but we have to help them and, and making sure that um, we put them in a good position to succeed. Injury report for Saturday night. What the Tigers look like going into the game versus Florida? Not that I'm aware of. Um, oh, Logan Diggs. Uh, I would say that he is – He, I would, I would put him as questionable. Um, going into Saturday. He was in a uh, red jersey today, uh, non-contact. We'll see how he responds tomorrow. Lower body injury? Uh, he had an upper body injury. Not lower, upper. Upper. That injury thing not working out as much as you would <laughs> like it to in November. He's a, he's a full go on a lower body injury. He's doubtful on an upper body injury. That's right. <laughs> uh, last one, Stewie, the, uh, the, the, the acceptance, the, the success that LSU's had in recruiting in North Louisiana, uh, what Brian Kelly makes of it. <sighs> this is the last one. Oh, I got you. What is go, you I, They're not, they don't go well. in order. Um, you know, I, I, I think I was indoctrinated to northern Louisiana as an area that we had not been – aggressively recruiting uh, for some reason. I, and again, I could be wrong, but that's kind of how I was, um, you know, uh, indoctrinated into Louisiana recruiting. So we, I've been up there several times and there's really good football, uh, great coaching, really good players. Um, and, you know, state champion teams up there, um, you know, <laughs> Our our, uh, uh, our recruiting coordinator, our head of recruiting, uh, J.R. Benton's from there, so uh, I hear about it every day. So um, Northern Louisiana uh, is going to be recruited um, vigorously because of that. Uh, Brian Kelly talking about J.R. Belton and the crew from West Monroe. Uh, Belton, of course, the uh, the former West Monroe standout, uh, and now leading the recruiting division for uh, for LSU. Uh, really done a nice job of closing, uh, closing the, the the gate to outsiders at least in North Louisiana and building the inroads that LSU was really lacking over the last couple of years. That it seems to be paying off uh, over LSU, especially when you look at the the offensive linemen they've been able to get out of the last couple of classes. Obviously Campbell and Hurd coming from that way, but you just were able to get Joseph Cryer uh, out of Natchitoches Central. He played at Manny as well. Uh, but even guys like Tylen Singleton, and I mean, there's just it feels as if LSU is now uh, a player again in North Louisiana and really being taken seriously on the recruiting trail, and that's something that they had they they had really lacked um, for a while. I mean, they just that that there was a there was a breakdown in what was happening in recruiting and building the roster and just having um, you know the absence of North Louisiana. I mean, it was it, it was. It was tough to be able to com to, to to stay competitive, um, but not being able to recruit that area. We'll talk to Glenn West a little bit about that. Shea Dixon is scheduled to be here at eight thirty this morning uh, with LSU back on campus. The anticipation of what the roster and what the recruiting weekend is going to look like. Uh, we'll also talk a little bit of basketball with Glenn West as uh, the LSU men back out on the floor tonight. The ladies got their rings last night and a big win. Uh, over Queens in uh, inside the Maravich Center, uh, so we'll talk a little bit about what's happening with um, uh, with that uh, uh, with, with, with the basketball teams and uh, the Tigers getting back on uh, to the floor. Uh, but we'll also focus obviously on LSU and uh, and Florida coming up on Saturday night, uh, which should be a 
uh, a really good matchup again. I mean, this the, these matchups always have high emotion. Uh, it's always kind of hard to predict what's going to happen uh, with, uh, with, with with these LSU Florida games of late because there's been a ton of uh, you know there's been a ton of emotion that's been going into these games. I mean that there has turned um, you know some sincere hate into both sides uh, of this game. So. Uh, it usually brings something kind of crazy, kind of weird that'll happen. I mean, obviously the shoe game being uh, the highlight, but this game always is kind of a back and forth. And I'd expect, nonetheless, on on Saturday night, you know, especially with this this defense. I mean, with with, with LSU's defense and uh, you know the inability to 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 stop or feel like they can adjust to stop anyone, uh, it really leaves you know, it leaves the, the, the opportunity for, for these fourth quarter games and uh, for these one possession games late late into the games, late into the contest to really stay alive. So, um, you know, you just it, it's hard to predict what these games are going to look like and feel like, um, especially when this series has been as back and forth as it has. And it, it really doesn't feel like it, 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 it depends on where each team is, if, the, if one team's struggling or not. You know, I mean, it usually is going to be... You either play up to uh, your competition or down to your competition, however, which team is good that year, but it's never a game you can gloss over, which is when the schedule came out, it felt like you looked at this and you're like, oh, it's usually Arkansas, and LSU usually, from just my previous experience, it, it's a kind of a flop game after Alabama. You just kind of hope to get through it. Now with it being Florida, do you think that's an advantage or disadvantage, regardless of if they're good or not, but kind of get your blood boiling a little bit to where you have to scratch that itch. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, it's different, too. You know, I mean, it's different on the schedule. It's a different type of preparation. It's it's one that can really captivate you, I think, if you're a player. I mean, um, you know, like we said, I mean, there's just a ton of emotion in this game. So it could play up to LSU. It could play into LSU's favor as far as the focus goes on on being prepared uh, for Saturday. But uh, nonetheless, I, I, I do believe that it'll be just a – um, you know, a typical LSU Florida game. I mean, highly emotional, highly competitive. Uh, fourth quarter, one possession, uh, with still opportunities to win it uh, late in the game for both teams. So, uh, it, it should be a uh, a typical uh, typical. Thanks match. for tuning in to our premium LSU content right here on YouTube. If you want more of it, subscribe below.